So it's turned cold here, winter now. Full force winter. Just making my way out to the beaver pond here. It's actually on my brother's property. And we got an interesting situation here because there's a there's a beaver in the pond. And uh, the other day I noticed there were some tracks up by the apple tree. I'm gonna show you that in a second. I've got a trail camera set here overlooking the pond. The pond's actually frozen today. So it's no surprise there's no activity. So I've got my spy point here. Uh, it's infrared. It also runs on a solar battery backup, which is really cool because the battery life lasts almost forever, even in like really cold conditions. Now check to see what's on the trail camera. Uh, the other day I threw some apples out here. Uh, I'm gonna tell you why in a second, but it has to do with beavers. The last one's actually of me. So the beaver didn't come up last night, but I've got a plan for that. So the other day I was walking my brother's property here looking for deer sign. I wanted to know if there was any deer around because the deer season's still on. And then I noticed some really interesting tracks in the snow. And I looked carefully at them and I thought, well, it could be coyote, it could be raccoon. They didn't really look like anything that looked like that. And I kept following them up and they stopped at this apple tree up here. But the cool thing about it, so it was rummaging around the base of the tree here and it was actually beaver tracks. At first glance, this would appear to be a deer track. It's got two points. But if you look carefully, there's actually a third point. That's the claws of a beaver walking up here and then digging away here at the snow to reveal apples that have been left over from this fall. So here's a look at the apple tree. Obviously, there's not any ripe ones left, but if you look carefully, there's a couple up here that the squirrel has tucked up here on top for later. That clever beaver has come up here checking one last time for a food source. So the idea is I'm going to set a big live trap and try to coax the beaver to go into the trap to get more apples. Now I wasn't successful with the trail camera on this event, but I'm going to put more out and see what happens. I've never known anybody to trap a beaver this way. Usually you'd use uh, body grip traps or Connie bear or something like that. But I'm not allowed to use them because I'm not a licensed trapper. Although I am permitted as an agent of the owner of the property to get rid of any nuisance animals. And in this case, we're gonna get rid of a nuisance beaver. The reason it's a nuisance is because my brother doesn't want all the trees cut down and he also doesn't want his land to be flooded. Matter of fact, I know that there's already been beavers trapped over here. And I know this is a perfectly renewable resource. If I take a beaver, Next year there's gonna be another one, and that's just a matter of fact. And I love eating beaver. To be honest, there's nothing better eating than beaver. So I'm actually using apples that I harvested from a tree. Wild apples, these are 100% wild apples. So you're gonna trade up from apples to a beaver. If I get a beaver, this could be like a 50 pound beaver. That's gonna be a tremendous gain. Now I know for a fact if I use the body grip trap, I could easily catch this beaver. Like I said, it's not legal for me to do so. It's legal for me to hunt beaver like this trapped it with a live trap and it's also legal for me to use a gun problem with hunting with a gun for beaver is that they're almost 100 percent nocturnal there are some beaver that you'll see during the day um, but for the most part like a beaver around here it's not going to be moving around during the day i could sit up in a little blind here and then hopefully the beaver comes out during daylight hours but this is much more efficient calorie wise i set this trap it takes me a few minutes i come back and check it every day and in the meantime, I can be busy collecting other things. Of course, when we're using a live trap like this, we have to come back every day to check to see if there's a beaver or any other animal in there. I might get unlucky, let's say. I might catch a raccoon. I could catch a coyote. I could catch a skunk. I can catch any number of different animals in this trap. So you never know. We're gonna throw the trail camera on here too, and hopefully we get some live action. If not, we actually catch a beaver, well maybe we'll get one slithering by, ignoring the trap completely, which is probably the most likely scenario because wild animals have defenses. They're not completely defenses. They have ways of evading all sorts of danger and a trap like this is danger to a wild animal and they know it. All right guys, so now you know what's going down. We've got an active beaver in the pond over here causing damage to the property, cutting down trees, making a mess, it's a renewable resource. We're gonna use it as food. We're also gonna keep the pelt. We can put it in our small cabin in the woods. So let's get this trap set up and baited with some apples. We'll put the trail camera over top of it and we'll see if we can actually get ourselves a bunch of resources from the land, renewable resources. 
So the tail camera here, it's overlooking the whole set here. If the beaver comes out on the ice, I'll be able to see it. I'm hoping for some warmer weather. That'll make the beaver become a little bit more active and break up the ice. Right now that ice is frozen, it's supposed to get a little colder. So the chances of me catching one in the next few days is pretty slim. I'll keep at it, I'll see what happens and I'm gonna keep you guys posted. Hey guys, next day, I've already checked the trap. I know I've got something in it, but it's not what we're looking for. It's not the species we were looking for. It's actually a little cottontail rabbit. But you know what? Cottontail's in season right now and they're super hard to hunt because they're nocturnal. And the thing is, if I let this rabbit go, I know it's gonna go back in the trap and I'm never gonna catch my beaver. It actually turned really cold. It's all frozen over, so the chance of me catching a beaver the next couple days is pretty slim, but it's about to warm up. That pond's gonna melt and the beaver's gonna get active again. So I'm gonna dispatch this rabbit, and of course I'm gonna eat it. You guys think it's not very sporting for me to take a rabbit out of a cage, and it's not, but this isn't a sport. I'm producing meals from the wild for myself. I've been doing that ever since this channel started, and I'm not about to quit now. Just because you guys are upset that I'm not making it a sport out of participating with an animal that clearly does not want to participate in this sport. It's not a sport, guys. This is actual living. I'm not gonna pass up an easy or free meal. This is about making food from the wild. So when I'm checking my traps, I always make sure I bring my 22. It's a Ruger 22. Um, pretty small bullet, very low noise. Got a scope on it. Don't need a scope, obviously, for this. What I'm gonna do is aim for the back of the head, just where it attaches um, right at the at the base of the skull what it attaches to the spinal column that'll kill it instantly It won't feel any pain whatsoever alternative is to shoot it like right in the eye and that'll kill Obviously the brain it won't feel anything at all that way But uh, I'd like to preserve as much as the animal I can and that includes preserving the brain So if I shoot it right at the base of the neck here Then uh, I'll keep the most amount of meat possible on the animal. It's a small animal to begin with so you have to make the most of it so yeah, let's get this done. It's not the easiest part in the world, but you get used to it. The more times you kill an animal, the more times you become accustomed to it. And then pretty soon you're almost desensitized to it. So when you go to a grocery store, you grab a piece of meat from the shelf. You don't think about all the things that went into getting that animal on the shelf. You just think piece of meat, mm, food, good. And not the point now where I'm actually literally salivating at the thought of going to get this rabbit. And that's where you know you're, you're at it. You finally overcome the obstacles which is getting over the graphic and sensitive parts of killing animals and actually view them as a package of food so when you open that bag of chips you know how your mouth starts to water because you're thinking about mmm bag of chips well that's how I'm feeling now when I'm skinning animals it's a good place to be it's the proper place to be and it's a natural place to be it's one quick shot you could see how instantly that animal died let's get the safety back on here those twitches if you can see you may not be able to see those twitches are basically basically what's called a death throw and the animal's muscles will twitch and twitch and twitch and twitch it's just a natural response to having the spinal cord completely severed and having no vital organs at all working for the animal so complete instant death and uh, the animal can't feel any pain and, and, and then the muscles just twitch after the fact okay gun safe check it all good safety on we've got the magazine out Grab our bullet. The bullet will go back in the magazine. Get the snow off of it here. Back in the magazine. Magazine goes in the pocket. Now the gun is 100% safe. There we go. There's Mr. Bunny. And he's going to make ourselves a nice meal. I'd say this cottontail is probably about the size of a squirrel. So it still makes a pretty... Well, no, I'd say twice the size of a squirrel. So it's still a pretty decent meal out of it. All right guys, while this rabbit is still warm, we're gonna skin him. I'm gonna use my Grohman mini skinner. I'm gonna skin him exactly like I would a squirrel. I'm not worried about keeping the pelt or anything like that. All right guys, speed forward. Here's our rabbit, all cleaned out, hairless, gutless, ready for the pot.
Now it's at a rabbit. Throw it right in there hole. We're gonna add uh, some adobo spice. So guys, if this is still for sale, it'll be in the link in the bottom. You uh, can grab it through Fowler's Makery Mischief. We partnered up, so we're sharing profits on this 50-50. Just saves us on uh, sip, uh, chipping and duty. So we don't have to pay the cost of shipping it back to the U.S. Alright guys, so we got a rabbit in the pot sitting there. We basically got something like three hours till that rabbit is anywhere edible. I know you guys don't like when I put animals in the pot and cook it, but for rabbit, that's the best way to start. If you don't, you're going to end up with something that's really chewy and you're not going to like it. Wild game is a lot different than your stuff you get from the store that's full of fat or else injected with extra fat, such as something like a turkey. So you have to cook it this way. I know you guys don't like it, but listen, trust me. As soon as you cook wild game, you'll understand. Take, take a leg off that thing, fry it. It's gonna be the chewiest thing you ever ate and you're probably not gonna be able to finish it. So when you're cooking rabbit, you don't wanna cook it any less than it will break apart by poking it. So that, my friends, is just about right. You pull this off, turn it into a sandwich. Man, I wish I had a fork. Bushcraft a fork time or what? Oh. So all we're gonna do is pull chunks off of this. Try not to get burnt. Look at that, that's a really good tender meat. Oh no, I lost it. Or rinse it off in the pot, five second rule's all good. Here, ouch, edge of the pot. All right, so that looks really good, man. Perfectly tender. Man, my mouth is watering already. You wanna be careful not to grab any of the sharp bones. So what you're gonna do is a kind of a rudimentary job here. There's a bone there. Do a rudimentary job of pulling off the bones. We're gonna put everything that we don't eat immediately right back in the pot and let that simmer down as a broth. Right now we're mostly concerned with just getting that meat off there. You're gonna get a lot more meat out of this than trying to fry it, I'll tell you that. You know it's good meat when it breaks apart with your hand like that. Just perfectly tender meat. And if you really wanted fried rabbit, all you'd have to do is, you know, continue to fry it. Put some oil in there, fry it up. All right guys, I think that's plenty enough to make our sandwich today. Um, you can see how tender it is. It literally breaks apart with your hands. And that's, that's about three good solid hours of just simmering on a slow, low heat. And that's what happens. There's a point where meat, when you put it in, in water and you boil it, it, it hardens up like a tough, tough, tough muscle and you can't eat it at all. And then after a while, it kind of loosens up a little bit. If you add a little bit of salt or the spices, what happens is the meat starts to relax more and more and more as time goes on until it breaks apart. It just kind of gives up, the muscle gives up. But this is what happens with just pure lean protein. I would advise you add some fat and some salt to this to help that process. Alternatively, what you can do is put it in a non-reactive container, plastic or a plastic bag, plastic container, something like that, or glass. Put your spices in there, let it soak for as long as possible. I've done it up to four or five days in a refrigerator and it's excellent. Keep it below, uh, you know, right around the point of freezing, not too high or else it's gonna spoil and just let that salt work into the meat. The salt and the flavor is gonna work in there. It's gonna make a really, really good food. So that's how you treat wild food, okay? So now what we're gonna do is break it up into small pieces. We're gonna add some barbecue sauce and we're gonna give it another fry and then we are ready to put it on our sandwich. Mix those flavors in there. That sauce will make up for the lack of fat content in the rabbit meat. Of course, we could also add an egg. That would work as a binder. We can make a proper burger. That rabbit bone makes a perfect stir stick. You need to have to bushcraft that one. It's always tricky to toast on open flame. Beautiful. So there you go guys, this is from Field to Fork. Fresh, I realize I made it backwards, but I do that on purpose. I always eat an open-faced sandwich. If I don't cover the top, 
all gets in my beard. <laughs> it might get in my beard anyway. This actually turned out perfectly. I uh, made a squirrel similarly, except I didn't do a long boil. And it worked out pretty good, but the, there was bigger chunks. And so the meat hadn't relaxed. So it was a quicker way to cook a bush meal to get the nutrients faster. But uh, this is a far superior way to make a burger. I would definitely do this again. This time I think I would actually try to make it the consistency of a burger and actually make the patty by adding an egg. All right, let's take a bite, see what it tastes like. Because my mouth is watering and I can barely talk anymore. That's really good. Got a bite of the burnt bread on that one. So I'm not getting a full force of the flavor there. That looks really good. I almost think it would be edible without adding the barbecue sauce. But obviously it adds a completely separate dimension. There's no fat in the rabbit. None at all. So adding some fat would definitely help. You can get all sorts of kinds of animal fat. Um, bear fat, moose fat. Add that in there. Perfect. So I had enough to probably make three sandwiches. Of one rabbit. Probably four. There's still quite a bit in the pot. None of it's going to go to waste. I'm going to bring it back to my family. Um, my wife and my son will really enjoy this. So, such is the cycle of life. You know, you're not wasting anything here. I'm not wasting anything when I'm making a burger. And are taking an animal from the wild. So either I take this animal from the wild or I take an animal from the grocery store. And I think my way of doing it is more in tune with how we did it historically. And it's a new renewable resource. And I think the animals have a much better life when you do it this way. So guys, stay tuned. I'm going to do a long talk with you because I think it's far overdue, put it that way. And I, th I think you should stick around to, to watch it. I know it's not going to be for everybody and some people are not ready to hear it, but I think you should. So I hope you enjoyed uh, this video. As I say, you can subscribe or not. I don't care. It doesn't mean I don't care about you. It just means I don't care if you subscribe or not. If these videos are not for you, don't subscribe. If they are, subscribe. It's really up to you. That's why I leave it up to you. That's why I don't care if you hit that button or not. And if you really like them, you can share. Um, but again, that's up to you. If you think somebody would benefit from hearing this talk that's uh, about to happen, send them the video. All right, guys. Cheers. You know I'm very active in the comments section. And I read probably 90% of them. And I think you guys really appreciate that and it's something I do want to continue. But I do, I want to address something that's been bothering me uh, for a while now and I think it deserves to be addressed. Um, I want, and I want to address it properly because it's not the, the criticism, I, I can, I like the criticism, I like the constructive criticism when people point out, hey, you could do this differently or whatever. Um, like a new, a new take on things, a new way of doing things, a productive way of doing things. That's that would, I, I would call that constructive criticism. But a lot of the comments are not constructive at all. They're, they're hate. Um, and I know you can't hate me from a video, so I don't take it personally. But to come to my video, my video, you, you know what's in the video. You see the title, you see the thumbnail, you know what to expect, you know what you're going to see, and and then just just hate, just to put a bunch of hate. And, and again, I'm, I'm not taking it personally, so it's not like something I can't take. It's just that I find I'm getting, by reading all these comments, I find I'm getting immersed into your world. And I want to offer uh, to you an extension. I want to offer understanding to you. I want to say I want to I want to understand what your perspective and where you're coming from. And I and I, I do when I read comments. I do I do try to do that, uh, but it gets to be a bit much, you know, because there's so much hate out there, and it's not even that we're harvesting animals from the wild and, and making food of them. I, I get that angle, but to actually hate somebody because of that is it's not the reason you're upset um, you're just finding an outlet for your anger and you know I, I read as a service I could provide that for you but it's not going to help it's not going to fix 
what it is that's bothering you. Something else is bothering you. So I, I presume that when you come in into a video and you hate and you get upset by what something somebody's doing and they're doing successfully and that's something that's constructive such as feeding my family or myself and it's legal and it's not hurting anybody else I have to presume and I think rightfully so that you're upset about something else that's going on in your life um, a long time ago I decided that when I saw somebody that I, f I found was successful instead of um, being upset about that or jealous about that what I would do is congratulate them on their success and I find that helped a lot um, with the jealousy that maybe I was feeling or the inadequacies or or being in a different level a different position in life than them um, but when I started to understand all the sacrifices that they made in order to get where they wanted to be it started to make make sense to me because if I was willing to make the same sacrifices as them I could probably achieve that same level of success and so all I had to do was do it all I had to do was do what they did and if I was unwilling to do what they did then I would be where I am and so everything in the world starts to make sense at that point and I think if you look at things the same way you'll you'll start you start to feel less jealousy and more like hey I can celebrate in this person's success and maybe I can take part in their success too. Like maybe I can help them along. Like can you imagine helping along somebody you f you feel is at a higher higher standing than you? But I mean that's the way you bring yourself up to the same level that this other person's at by helping them. And another thing I've been doing is because I've reached a higher level on YouTube, I've started to help people that are lower than me to to extend my gratitude in a active and productive way so rather than you know banging on the drums as the victor of all of outdoor YouTube I've started to help people with smaller channels and I know this may sound like an invitation but I do have uh, you know half a dozen people that I'm helping right now out of the out of just pure charity and I can't help everybody um, you know, I have, I have my own personal life too, and I have my son to take care of, and my wife to take care of, and a, and a whole other set of things to take care of that I, I can't always help everybody, but I do my best. So back to the comments, and when you guys are sharing your stories, okay, good. Let's, let's start off on the same page right now, and I know straight out people are going to be upset that one, I shot the rabbit out of a cage, which wasn't sporting. I get that, but this isn't a sport to me. You know, I get that you don't like to eat rabbits because you had a pet rabbit. You know, you don't want you don't want to see me eat a rabbit because you own a pet rabbit. I own pet chickens. I had chicken egg laying chickens for years, and we still ate chicken. We buy from the store. We grill it with a barbecue. In fact, from where I was, I could barbecue my chicken that I bought from the store while watching my chickens in the backyard. There's a difference here, guys. I'm not eating your turtle or your rabbit. You know, as men, we need to. We need to stop being on each other so much. Guys, I'm not trying to get into a debate of whether what's right and wrong. What I'm saying is, is, is back off. I'm saying settle down. You know, maybe your dad never said that, but you're not being cool. I mean, it's, it's not cool what you're doing. And, and you're not being productive when you do it. And you're not gonna stop me from doing it. What I see is, is people's hurt and pain and they're trying to let it out and find a target to do it but it's not it's not going to help you in the long run it's really not um yeah, i don't know what else to say i mean i can leave it to you guys in the comment section to kind of sort this out i know we're going to get some hate on this uh video and i and i know where it comes from i do i really do i mean you could pretend that it just has to do with me eating a rabbit you can try to pretend that that's what it is, but why not celebrate the fact that I'm making a wild meal? You know, that I'm being productive. And what are you doing with your life? Are you being productive? You know, are you trying to raise yourself up to the level that you see other people that you, you're having a desirable life? Do you do that? Are you actively working on that every day? Do you have a plan? Or are you just skipping from 
one video to the next of people doing things that you hate and finding a target for your pain. Which is it? I've made my choice. I'll continue to read the comments and I'll continue to try to help you sort through these things. But there's only so much I can do. You know, the rest of it's on you. You have to do things. Men are doers. We're not talkers. The more talk you do, the worse the worse you are. You got to go do something. You really do. Just go go do it. Make yourself a better life and address the pain that you feel and the jealousy and then inadequacies all those things can be addressed you really can it's if if you're hurting that much that you're what you're doing what you're doing then it's going to take some work but if you look at things differently it will it will come around it really will it will i want to leave you with one final anecdote and maybe it doesn't relate exactly to what we're doing now but I think it's a proactive stance to deal with anger and frustration and lack of control that maybe you're feeling. Um, I have an elderly neighbor. I moved into a new neighborhood and I would get calls all the time uh, building zoning and they would come and they would have a problem with whatever I was doing. I just moved in and initially I had problems with the size, the height of my hedge. Well, I just moved in. It wasn't really my hedge, so I cut the hedge. And I started doing some renovations and I found you know, building zoning again. So I was getting called out and called out and called out. So eventually I went over to my neighbor and said, listen, if you're doing this, if you're calling, stop. It's like, I'm happy to help. She's elderly, she needed help. If you're ha I'm happy to help. But if in order for me to continue to help, um, I need you to stop calling. I don't know if it's you, but you've been here forever. And you know everybody in the street. So if it's not you, you know who it is. So tell them to stop. You know, we're on the same page here. And... We need to get with it. There was, it was met with denial and I backed off and I said, fine, if it's not you, that's okay. Cool. We're good now, right? Well, it happened one more time and I was really frustrated by it and I didn't know if it was her or not. I didn't know who it was. And it snowed a lot that day. So I took my shovel, I went over to her house and I shoveled her driveway. And that was a moment when I was finished the driveway. I'm like, okay, good, done. I was done. I actually addressed the frustration I was feeling by doing something proactive. And it just put things, it was an experiment. It was a psychological experiment on myself to see what would happen if I actually did something nice for somebody who was really frustrating me. And it worked because I was done with it. And I don't know if she ever knew I shoveled the driveway or not because I never told her. And I only tell people this example when I think it can help them deal with something. So I'm not talking to brag. I'm just saying this is, it's a good way to deal with the things that are going on inside your head when you can't control them. The external environment. You can actually go out and do something for somebody else who's bothering you and just say, just leave it, you know? I guess at some level you know that that person's gotta be like, I was being an ass. I was not being very nice. And examine what, how they're treating you. You know, it's like, stop, don't like that. And then they're like, okay, I see that. I see that you're a good person and I'm not being very nice to you. So that's what I've been trying to do in the comments to the people who are saying not nice things. And I'm also trying to understand where people are coming from too. So, you know, maybe your dad didn't help you. Maybe your mom didn't help you, but there's other people out there that if you express your hurt and pain to you, they'll, they'll help you. There's not very many of them, but if you just say, Hey, this is how I'm feeling, lay it out there and then put it on them. Then that's them. It's them to deal with. Right? Anyway, let's get back to this rabbit. Let's carry on with things.
we had a big thaw the last few days that pond uh, melted so hoping for some beaver activity actually just walking down here I don't see any new beaver tracks which is a little bit concerning I do see a lot of rabbit tracks so it's a good chance we got another rabbit uh, that wouldn't hurt we could add that to the pot so let's uh, let's make our way down here to the creek and see what's up I hope my trap hasn't flooded we had so much rain and all the snow melted us back now but it uh, snowed quite a bit and uh, new snow and but all that existing snow melt oh look a uh, trap is set off what do we got who oh, no not what we're looking for not a beaver you guys tell what that is yet that's a big fat raccoon hey buddy how's it going Hey buddy, how's it going? You got a little nest in there? You look uh, not so happy. You guys have been watching my channel for any length of time, you know that raccoon is perfectly 100% edible. Thing is, I don't want to eat a raccoon today. I'm pretty happy with the rabbit. It's a good change of pace. Um, it's way too much meat for here, but if you guys are ever in a situation when you want to live off the land, this is the way to do it, man. Get yourself a live trap or a bunch of live traps. In fact, if you're worried about living off the land or SHTF or Armageddon, having a bunch of these live traps on hand is an excellent way to go. I've, all I did was put in some apples that I found basically around here. Uh, I've trapped raccoon before using uh, just uh, salmon can the empty can not having eating everything out of it take a little bit of the juice and spread it around put it in the trap you'll catch yourself a raccoon all day long so the pond is actually this way we actually want the raccoon not to go into the pond for its own sake that's a heavy raccoon had a raccoon in texas our raccoons in comparison are so docile compared to the raccoons in Texas is crazy. These guys are like, <laughs> they're like friendly, a friendly version of the one I had in Texas. He's just, he's just chilling out in there. All right, let's get you so you can have some room to run there, buddy. There's a lock mechanism at the front here. So once you bend and lift the lock, that comes up. Pretty easy way to release a raccoon. You don't have to stay away from the front of the trap. Okay, traps open. Come on, bud. Now we gotta get him convinced that it's the door is open. He doesn't realize the door is open. They're not super smart, are they? You wanna go or not? Alright, let's go. I'll tilt the back up here. Come on. There he goes. <laughs> he went right up straight up the trail. Guys, if you're using these live traps, make sure you come back every single morning and check your trap. Ideally, you check your trap in the morning, you check your trap in the evening. You never know if you get a squirrel caught in there. You don't want that squirrel in there all night long. And it's not, it's not nice to the animal just to leave it in there. Animals live busy lives and they're preparing for winter. So if you have it in a, in a trap for a day or two, that's a day or two where it can't go out and actively forage. So every morning, every evening, come check your live traps. If it's a kill trap, well, then you owe it to yourself to not waste the animal. Um, I'm a firm believer in the fact that if you have an animal in a trap and you leave it there and it gets eaten by another animal, it's not tactically being wasted. It's just being consumed by another entity and life goes on. That's a really good tender burger. My opinion, that's the only way you can make a rabbit properly edible. It's either stew or burger. I actually prefer the burger. It's really tender. It's a lot better than reconstituted turkey from a can. That's for sure.
and that's good and filling. Burger's the way to go, guys. Burger's the way to go. I think I got any of my beer yet. 